It's Tuesday night, the 28th of June. A very good evening. I'm Salima Shimwefele Masipa. Leading our news bulletin tonight, Nampol on Monday issued a preliminary report on the arrest of Vintuk Mayor Sade Gavanas. The report states that an argument erupted between Nampol's crime prevention forum members and three individuals, one of them being the mayor. Governess was arrested after one of the three individuals allegedly showed a middle finger towards the driver of the police vehicle. The report further states the mayor was later released upon her identification. Governess has opened charges of crime and injuria, unlawful arrest and common assault. Investigations will be underway, the report said. Now, earlier this morning, Primetime News met with the city mayor to hear her side of the story. Have a listen to this. And the way that they were, they were going on was a great concern because if these people are not are not emotionally stable. They cannot be given weapons. And and one of the the, the station commander of Anayeda said that these police officers were not fully trained. And then I asked them, but how? How is it possible that you are putting people on the streets, patrolling in your vehicle, and they are not fully trained and they are with ammunition. They are with AK forty sevens. This is total intimidation. This is how they are treating our people. This is what they are doing and treating our people. And I thank God they didn't know who I was because that exactly showed you who, how they are dealing with a mere person on the, on the ground. Intimidation, victimization, threatening people. Um, this is what they're doing, very rude, very disrespectful. Um, so after that, we went to the Vanayeda police station and then I, I, I told them I'm going to open a case, basically unlawful arrest, um, 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 assault. Um, so the docket has been opened. There is a case against the Namibian police um, and, and, and obviously to deal with the matter as best as it is. It is, it, is, it, is a, it is a realization that if you are not in a position of power, that you will be treated. That is the sad story. That is the story that we need to tell today is that if you are not in a position of power and you cannot influence, that it doesn't matter that they will treat you with police brutality, that they will do what they want with you and there will be no consequences to it. Meanwhile, the affirmative repositioning movement and the Namibia economic freedom fighters have condemned the arrest of the city mayor. George Hendricks filed this insert. Former Munduk Mayor Chupong Panda on his Twitter account shared a statement calling the arrest misplaced and unprofessional. No matter the circumstances, the police is supposed to handle the matter differently than arresting and harassing the mayor, he said. Namibian Economic Freedom Fighters Deputy President Kalimbo Ipumbu also issued a statement late Monday in which he condemns the arrest. He stated it is morally, ethically and cognitively unjustifiable to arrest a democratically elected mayor while as in line of her duty. Primetime News will keep you posted as new developments unfold. On to our next story, Speaker of the National Assembly, Peter Kachavivi, expressed the importance of effective governance in providing transparent and accountable management and oversight of any entity. Isabel Bento provides us with more details. I was saying this um, strategic plan defines uh, the goals of ECN in which direction they wish to achieve over the next five years, the actions to be undertaken to achieve them, and how the ACN will ensure progress. I'm informed that the, that the defined strategic actions contained in this important strategic plan flow from among others, the Commission's 2016, 2017, 2021, 22 strategic plan and build on lessons from the 2019, 2020 national elections, as well as the subsequent by-elections that were conducted throughout the country. Director of Ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen, the development of this strategic plan afforded ECN 
and an opportunity for retrospection into its purpose, mandate, and the res responsibility. The Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Forestry has spent a total of 14 million Namibian dollars in combating the fourth wave of the brown locust outbreak in the Claras region. Namibia is among the SADC countries that experienced the infestation of brown locusts during the 2021-2022 summer. Namibia is among the Southern African Development Community SADC countries that experienced the infestation of brown locusts during 2021-2022 summer. In a recent interview with NAMPA, the Ministry's Public Relations Officer Jonah Museku said a total surveyed area of 2.2 million hectares was infested. However, only 1.2 million hectares were sprayed by both government officials and farmers in the region. Museko indicated that millions of hectares of grazing land had been damaged. He added, however, the government currently does not have a special specific program aimed at assisting farmers who are directly and indirectly affected by the locust infestation. He further noted that the ministry continues with the surveillance and monitoring of brown locusts and African migratory locusts in all 14 regions for the timely response. When we return, Old Mutual Namibia invests 5 million Namibian dollars through its Old Mutual Women's Summit. Leading our business news segment tonight, through the bank's bursary program, Nedbank Namibia has awarded bursaries totaling 190,000 Namibian dollars to seven students from various tertiary institutions in Namibia. Seven applications were successful, including those from Nedbank Namibia employees who are studying part-time. The Nedbank Namibia Bursary Committee conducted interviews and in-depth assessments before awarding the candidates who met the qualifying criteria. Faith Kluter, acting head of human capital at Nedbank Namibia, told NAMPA on Monday that the rationale for the employee's intention to pursue further studies should include, but not be limited to, outlining the full curriculum of the particular course compared to the employee's existing job description and how the qualification will add value to the employee's personal development within their role and responsibility. She said, among other things, NetBank Namibia is committed to achieving its vision by granting bursaries to both its employees and external candidates for formal educational qualifications that will facilitate their development and the implementation of the bank's strategy, adding that those who did not make the successful list this year should apply next year. Old Mutual Marketing and Communications Acting Executive Ashanti Manetti said Old Mutual Namibia, through its Old Mutual Women's Summit, has reached over 5,000 women to date with an investment of close to 5 million Namibian dollars. Manetti made the announcement at the 12th Annual Women's Summit hosted by Old Mutual Namibia in Swakopmund over the weekend, where over 140 women were in attendance. During the summit, the speakers discussed how they overcame adversity and life events to be the people they are today. She stated that the event brought together women to share their stories and engage with four renowned speakers on how to become more financially independent and secure. 
Manetti said she is encouraged to say that they all had a captivating and valuable experience that will not only end here, referring to the summit's extensive and heartfelt conversations. During the summit, the speakers discussed how they overcame adversity and life events to become the people they are today. It's time for the latest in sports. Good evening, I'm Joy Gosses. We commence with the rugby news. Senior men's national rugby team coach Alistair Kutia says, preparations for the upcoming 2022 Rugby Africa Cup quarterfinals against Burkina Faso in France have gone well and they look forward to the tournament. The team departed for France on Monday. Namibia plays Burkina Faso in the quarterfinal match on 1st July 2022, with the winner facing either Zimbabwe or Ivory Coast in the semi-finals. On to Formula One news. Formula One and Mercedes have condemned racist language used by former world champion Nelson Piquet towards Lewis Hamilton. 
Reports in Brazil claim an interview conducted following the 2021 British Grand Prix has surfaced in which the 69-year-old PK uses a racial epithet. George Hendricks reports. The Brazilian is reported to have been discussing a collision between Hamilton and his title rival Max Verstappen, which saw the Dutchman retire from the race. The comments have only just come to light and Formula One issued a statement immediately supporting seven-time champion Hamilton. Discriminatory or racist language is unacceptable in any form and has no part in society. Lewis is an incredible ambassador for our sport and deserves respect, it read. Mercedes too highlighted the matter as a reason to strive for a brighter future. We condemn in the strongest terms any use of racist or discriminatory language of any kind, their statement read. Stand by for your sports roundup. Thank you for watching. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe, like, share and press the notifications bell to stay posted on the latest happenings locally and globally. Do join us tomorrow for another edition of Primetime News. From myself, Joy Gosses, and the entire production crew, have a lovely evening.